Welcome back to Wingnuts, the home of micro maintenance. And we've been that busy, we've had to do two episodes. Home of micro maintenance. Now, I know I say that we've been crazy busy every week, but every week just seems to get busier and busier. Mainly, I'm trying to keep Ben uh, from under my feet and keep him doing some things, but we started the week off with a fantastic phone call from our friend Sean, and we've got an exciting project coming our way in the next week or so. We're excited mate, generally can't wait to do it. It's one of those jobs that me and Alan just, just uh, you know, we... Throw it in. Yeah, 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 I like stuff like this mate, so I, I really can't wait. And you know, you know we're going to micro-maintenance it, so, that, you know, we'll, yeah. we're, we're going to do we're gonna do our thing to it. We like we like doing nice stuff, so yeah, I can't wait for it to make, uh, yeah, to get here mate. a nice little YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> I can get it across to you. Fantastic. Alright then buddy, I'll speak to you then. Bye. Cheers Sean. Cheers, mate. Bye bye. Bye bye. What we need, <coughs> what we need, some of those pictures blown up, don't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, I'll print off a file and get we, on we, get we, a, um, a board on the go. We need to get ahead onto that engineering side of things so that we're not looking at the plane when it's here going mm. right, you know. So we'll download all the mod forms, all the application forms, get it all on the file and take it from there. Well, that was a result, wasn't it? So we have a RANS coming into us that we're going to do a full disabled mod. So I've been talking to Sean, who's uh, been a good friend of mine for a while. He's uh, uh, a wheelchair user. So we're going to look at putting in hand controls for rudders, uh, better throttles, braking, uh, and even going to try and find a mod that we can do so we can easily get his wheelchair in the back seats. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's... Uh... It's a it's a good challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We love it. We love challenges. Yeah. <laughs> so great news that that's coming our way. We really can't wait to get our teeth stuck into that. We like to do something a little bit different there. But my first job of the week was working on this Adam. And again, hopefully, if you've seen our previous episodes or anything we do on Facebook, you know that we uh, we love these machines. We make a few little modifications of our own just to micro maintenance them up. Uh, and one of the things that we were fitting was a Tiggy fuel flow computer. Some of you may know of Tiggy systems. I personally think they're fantastic. And if you uh, saw the first video that I, I was part of with Giles Fowler off of Golf, Golf I can never say Golf Fox Track 22, off of Golf Fox 22. Um, I flew his machine, and one of the things that I loved was that there was no instruments. Uh, I thought it was fantastic, but one of the things I thought was really good was uh, the fuel flow computer, the Tiggy. Um, and so we recommend, certainly recommend the Tiggy. It's a fantastic unit, um, and it runs in real time. Um, so it tells you the fuel flow. You tell it what fuel you've got on board, and from actual real time, it tells you your elapsed time. That's very, very reassuring when you're some distance away from your landing site to know that you've got 76 minutes and that you can obviously fly better or worse um, uh, and to affect your float rate. So it works using this Impala. So we need to put this in line. There are a number of ways that you can configure this. We do straight through. We need to connect this in line and then use the system control lead to connect to the head unit, which we've already fitted in here. So, come on, look at this. So, hopefully, if you've seen some of our other videos, you can see we've made this custom bracket, and as always, we've micro maintenanced it. Motor monitor on the bottom on this one, Tiggy's on the top. It runs on a, off a power supply, 9 volt battery that's on the back there again. Very easily removed, so you literally unplug the signal lead, the whole thing comes out, which is great because it means it doesn't class as part of the weight of the aircraft because it can be removed. We're now going to run the signal lead down the front strut through the main uh, keel tube down there to connect to the Impala. So we've uh, installed the Impala, we've lock wired that 
so that the mechanism can't come apart on both sides. And what we're going to do is hide this away, get it zip tied onto the airframe, and then we can look at testing uh, and installing the uh, signal cable. So, the important part of every job is tested. So obviously we messed with the fuel system um, and the last thing that we want <laughs> is there to be a leak or a fault. So we've put the fuel back in the tank. You see we've removed the skirt so we can get a visual on it. Um, and we're going to leave this uh, on a drip tray so that we can see if any fuel's leaking from connections uh, that we've made before we hand it back to the customer. So it was great to get that fitted on the machine. We also looked at fitting one of our RPM gauges. We like these so much that we just fit them now as standard, um, as, as part of the package when you buy a machine from ourselves. Hello, sports fans. <laughs> so, uh, first job of the day, we are going to fit, this is an RPM gauge. This is, if you buy a PB or an Adam through micro maintenance, we like to micro maintenance things. We can't not, it's in our nature. So one of the things we're fitting as standard to all our machines is this Hobbs and RPM gauge. Um, we do a slightly tricky install on this, which we'll go through at some point, but that gets fitted as standard. I like these, they're very inexpensive. I think you can buy them for around about 20 pounds. Uh, what that is in other currencies, I have no idea because it's too early for my brain to work out. But this records um, RPM, it also records runtime, um, and also you can schedule in maintenance. So, one of the other things that we do if you buy a machine through micro maintenance is we give you a 25 hour check. So, I'm going to type into this on when 25 hours is up. That should let the customer or the owner know when it needs a service and it can they can then bring it into us and then we do our first kind of owner's inspection so we go through with the owner check all the wing check all the airframe component parts do engine run-ups to make sure that it's running okay so we use this um, to schedule that in i hate velcro <laughs> Okay, so what we've done is we've installed these little RPM gauges and hops meters. I quite like them, like I say, very inexpensive. Don't need to buy them from me. You get them straight from Amazon or eBay, wherever you preferred online marketplace. But with the PBs and the Adams, uh, one of the optional extras is the motor monitor, which I'm a fan of. Um, I keep coming back on, I like, I like simple, I, I like basic, but it is reassuring to have things like an RPM gauge. It's nice to have a CHT gauge. It's nice to know your airspeed, or a, a, a speed, which obviously in this case is um, ground speed. And there's a few things in there, like the uh, find home, and it tells you the wind, and I really like it. And, the, and like I say, the, the in there is an RPM gauge. But it uses the standard pickup lead, which wraps around um, the, the HT lead there. And again, you uh, wind on the coils around here, and as the signals, the sparks coming through uh, to the spark plug, the winds here using like an electromagnetic coil, registers the one pulse per revolution that it's doing, and then therefore comes back to the RPM gauge and shows you what your RPM is. Again, you can alter this by adding more turns on. I think Ben does the, re the requirements, and then two for luck. Um, but it's not as accurate and i noticed this uh, certainly uh, during my flights on um, on my pb that certainly at full power i wasn't really believing what the rpm gauge was telling me uh, um so i did a bit of research talked to a, a few friends uh, and people in the know and um, they advised me to <clears throat> tap into the coil so here we have the coil which is generating the spark. Spark's coming down uh, the HT lead here. And this is the earth kill switch. So as this is generating the spark, it's going also down uh, the kill switch. So this is the, the magneto switch you, which you would earth. It would then earth against the block and, and therefore the engine would stop. So there is a pulse coming down this in real time. So if you are doing 8,000 uh, RPM, 
there is a pulse coming down this uh, to, uh, to register that. Again, if you're a low RPM, so it is very, very accurate. So we've tapped into the earth tap lead here, just with a simple crimp connection. Obviously we've heat shrinked it as well because it's outside and you want anything forming in there. So that you get an accurate RPM gauge, which particularly when you're doing your run-ups or you're doing any carb tunes is so vital. Um, and since fitting this to mine uh, and I'm running the motor monitor and uh, the RPM Hobbs gauge, certainly when you go past the sort of mid-range cruise power into the full power, there is a massive RPM difference. And so we decided from that point to fit these as standard and you've got an accurate RPM gauge so you know exactly what it is that you're doing. But works for me, I like it, works for a few other people. Hope we give you a bit of tips and advice. Well, yeah, really nice to see this done. And Daniel, who popped in at the weekend, really pleased with the outcome. So yes, great to get that one out of the way. We've spent a lot of time this week just getting ready for the show. And you notice that there's a gap here where there was a Sky Ranger Ninja previously. Uh, this is an aircraft that we're gonna be doing up ready for sale. So those guys of you who are looking for a Sky Ranger Ninja, hopefully we should have something for you in the next week or so. So the first job was getting the Don up and running on the Sky Ranger Ninja. So we had a quick chat on things that we wanted to do with the machine. Donnie then quickly promptly worked on the engine doing a, uh, a service inspection before we uh, got the aircraft ready for its first 100 hour service. What you're trying to, um, uh, trying to get to, when, when, when you, um, uh, as you go down through the inspection, anything that comes, anything that you think needs doing that sits outside of the normal ins inspection, um, make a note of it because that will go down as a, as a, as a, new, as a new job. And it was great to see Donnie and Shelley working together on that machine. It was really going uh, ahead. And then we uh, showed Donnie a bit more on type. I think it was his first time of firing a, uh, a Sky Ranger Ninja up. Um, uh, so, yeah, Shelley just had a quick brief with him in there. We got the cops balanced on that machine. The next job was working on this Tanog. This Tanog came to us uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and the moment we, it rolled through the door, we knew there was a bit of a story that came along with this aircraft. So there's been a lot of background research, a lot of diving through log books and really just getting to grips of what's been done to this machine. You know, we don't just go in there, yep, yeah, sign things off. You know, we really, really want to make sure that what we're putting our name to uh, is what it should be. And more importantly, making sure the aircraft is safe for the owner. So first thing we wanted to do was make sure that the engine was good. So Shelley uh, had an attempt of starting the engine after an inspection. And we quickly found out that there was uh, sleepy mag boxes. So this, this aircraft has come in with a suspected um, starting, st starting fault on the ignition circuits. So um, he's been finding it difficult to start um, when it's been in cold conditions and um, he's suspected, um, I call them sleepy, sleepy ignition boxes, they, 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 they fall asleep and uh, when you can't start the engine and it's not even firing, um, like he did, what he's done is he's got a, a hair dryer and he's warmed up the boxes and uh, he's tried to start it and it started. So um, the last time that we tried to start it, we started it on a hot day sun's beating down so these are in the sunshine it's nice and warm and it started up fine we've come to start it today on a cold and drizzly day and it hasn't started so we've taken a known working box off another aircraft swapped that in and it started first time and we've immediately done the ignitions checks and it's now working on both ignitions so we're going to take the um we're going to take the slave ignition unit off put the other box back on and now we should be able to get the aircraft to start on the original box which should wake up the bad box and end up with two working ignitions once we'd rectified that issue uh, Shelley was able to fire the engine up um, and go through some of its history <laughs> And then she brought me up to speed on what she'd discovered 
uh, and, uh, and we had a quick chat on how we can move forward with that machine. Little modifications. Right? Yeah, like I read this. that. But yeah. actually, they're tiny, they're tiny. He's actually done a really good job and the places where he's gone against the build manual, he's done it better than the build <laughs> manual. That's always awesome. Like this, he's, uh, yeah, I've seen that. He's, he's, he's put it the right way up rather than upside down and that's the better way. Uh, so, so the next one on this one was to uh, take photographs of everything for the BMAA records. Yes, yeah, so well Rob's up this weekend as well. So oh, is he? Yeah, so I can always hand him over a USB. So yes, more to come from this Tanarg. I think there's a, uh, a few conversations to be had, so don't mention anything to the owner just yet.